with the increase in the data transactions over the network channel. Have any of us ever wondered what procedures or protocols does the data must have to go through when transmitted over the network node? Well, this is what we will see in today's topic. Hi guys and welcome to yet another interesting video by Simply Learn. But before we begin, if you love watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Now without further ado, let's take a look at the agenda for today's video. For today's topic, firstly we'll understand what is an OSI model. Then we'll see the structure for the OSI model. Continuing with knowing the layer structure and information in the OSI model. Let's start. To better understand the OSI model, let's take a look at a scenario. Assuming we have two different systems with different operating system installed in them. And there is a communication channel between them over which the data is shared. But sometimes during transmission of data, it faces some problems. These errors often arise due to the different operating system installed in the system or due to a network problem during a transmission. But to overcome such situations, the OSI model structure is used. Using the OSI model structure, we can make the transmission of data over the communication channel error free. Let's take a look at the definition for the OSI model. The OSI model stands for Open System Interconnection Model or a specifically designed set of protocols and standards that governs the modeling and conversion of the data for proper transmission over the network channels. The OSM model is based on the layer structure, where it consists of seven different layers, where each layer has different set of protocols that are to be applied on the data during the transmission over the network channel. Let's take a look at the different layers of the OSI model. The OSI model consists of seven different layers which perform specific functions and apply different protocols at different layers to maintain the quality and prevent the data from getting corrupted when it is transmitted over the communication channel. Let's take a look at each of them. The first layer is known as the application layer, which is the topmost layer. Then we have the presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer, which is the last layer of the OSI model. The upper four layers in the OSI model represents the host layers. That is, they interact with the application related issues when the data is transmitted over the communication channel. Whereas the lower layers are termed as network layers. They specifically deal with the transmission related steps for the data over the network channel. Let's take a look about some information in regards to the layers. Now let's take a look at the function and the data format that is handled by each of the layers during the transmission of data. The first layer is the application layer, which interacts as a gateway for the host data and network applications and handles the data format. Then we have the presentation layer, which handles the initial step towards the conversation of data for transfer. It also handles the data format. Then we have the session layer. Session layer establishes a connection between the network devices for the data transfer. Then we have the transport layer, which oversees the data that is transferred without any error and is in the same pattern needed by the destination system. The data format handled by this layer is segment format. Next, we have the network layer, which determines the path for the data transfer. It handles packet related data. Then we have the data link layer, which performs the task of connecting the physical nodes for the transfer of data. It handles frame data. And in the end, we have the physical layer, which is used to transfer the raw bits, that is in terms of ones and zeros over the physical mode. 
Now that we are clear about different layers that are present in the OSI model and some information regarding them, let's take a look at each of the layers in detail. We'll start with top to bottom, that is, the application layer will be the layer that we'll be starting with. Let's take a look. The topmost layer in the OSI model is the application layer, which acts as an interface between the user and the applications that are being accessed which can be Internet Explorer, Chrome, or any email client. It also handles different protocols that are needed for the data transmission over the network channel, which can be given as Hypertext Transfer Protocol, the HTTP Protocol, and the SMTP Protocol, which is the Simple Mail Transfer Protocols. Now let's move on to the next layer. The next layer is known as the Presentation Layer. The presentation layer is responsible for performing conversion tasks over the data that is received from the application layer. The conversion of data is done in accordance to the required format. It also performs encryption over the converted data so as to prevent it from getting hacked by cyber criminals or hackers. The compression of the encrypted data is also performed by the presentation layer so that it can be passed on to the session layer. The next layer in the OSI model is known as the session layer. In this layer, the communication channel between two different devices is established. The network devices are individually known as session. The data that is transferred is to be done over these session channels. The layer that is the session layer establishes and terminates these sessions in case of an error or some other unforeseen event. This layer is also responsible for authentication checks regarding the data that is being transferred and also provides data recovery options in case an error occurs over the communication channel. Some model layers. Let's take up a question. The question is, what is the main action that takes place at the presentation layer? And the options are, first option, data segmentation, Second option, encryption of data. Third option, framing of data. And the fourth option, bit conversion of data. You can provide your answers in the comment section below. Let's move on with the next layer. The next layer in the OSM model is known as the transport layer. The main task performed by this layer is to break the data that is received from the session layer into different segments. These segments comprise of protocols which are UDP protocol and TCP protocol along with the data that is segmented from the received data. Then the segmented data along with the UDP and TCP identification is transferred over to the transmission channel where then it is further transferred to the network devices that requested for the data. This layer also performs a very crucial part, which is the flow control. Let's understand flow control over the network channel through a small example. In this example, the server has a capacity to send 50 Mbps of data at once, whereas the receiver side has a capacity for 10 Mbps. When the data is transferred from the server to the client, it transfers 50 Mbps. But it is impossible to transfer all this data at once due to the lower capacity on the client side, which is why the flow control changes is required, which is provided to the server side by the transport layer. Now let's move on to the network layer, which is the third layer from the bottom in the OSI model. This layer is responsible for breaking down the segments into data packets by adding IP address to them that is received from the transport layer. These data packets are then further transmitted over to the best possible route to the destination system, which are governed by the internet protocols, including IP and IPv6 protocols. For example, if we have a data that is to be transferred to the network device 2, we choose the best option, that is the route, to be transferred over to that network device. 
Now let's move on to the next layer in the OSI model, which is a data link layer. This layer is responsible for maintaining and terminating the established connection between the devices over the network. The MAC address in this layer is added to the data packets, which are collectively known as data frames. These data frames are then further transmitted over to the physical network. These are divided into two different sublayers. Medium access control, that is MAC, which controls the established connection device. And the second sublayer is logical link control layer, LLC, which identifies the address and provide flow control for the data. This data frame, as earlier told, is transferred over to the physical layer. Now let's take a look at another question to brush up whatever we learned so far. The question is, which layer includes the MAC sublayer in the OSI model? Option 1, Application layer. Option 2, Session layer. Option 3, Data link layer. Option 4, Transport layer. You can give your answers in the comment section below. Let's move on to the last layer in the OSI model, which is a physical layer. This layer is responsible and provides the physical medium over which the data frame is transferred. But the transfer data is converted into bits before it's transferred. The transmission of data is covered by different protocols that are embedded in the physical layer. The transmission of ones and zeros format data is done. It also is responsible for maintaining the data quality by applying different necessary protocols and maintaining the bitrate throughout the transfer of data, whether it be wired medium or wireless medium. With this, we have reached the end of the module. If you have any questions regarding the topic, you can ask them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.